Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to my channel. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to vary colors between light and dark mode in your iOS app. I'll have timestamps and a pinned comment below in case you want to skip to one specific part. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to go on my computer and open up Xcode. And I'm going to create a new Xcode project, however, uh, you can do these exact steps on any of your current projects. I'm going to I'm going to go and just create a single view app and just for the uh, for the time being I'll just call this varying uh, varying colors like that and just save it to my desktop. All right. Now, one thing you want to make sure is when you're uh, working with dark mode, you want to make sure that your deployment target is above iOS 13, either iOS 13 or above iOS 13. And the reason you want to do that is because dark mode was an iOS 13 feature. So if you're trying to do this with um, iOS 12 or below, it's not really going to work uh, as intended. So make sure that your deployment target is a, is iOS 13 or above, and that the app you're developing um, that you that you want light and dark mode on is going to be compatible with iOS 13 and above. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to my main dot storyboard. And now when you can what you can see on the main dot storyboard is simply a white page. Now the thing is is if I were to be in light mode or dark mode on a white page, it will change from white on light mode to black on dark mode. And the reason it will is because this is a system color. So if you go over and you click on the view and you see here the background, it is listed as system background color. So if I were to run it, then it's going to change in light and dark mode. So just for the um, just to show you, I'm going to run this on an iPhone 11 simulator here. And I'm just going to collapse uh, that right here for a second and open up the simulator. Drag it over here. Okay. And uh, it takes a while. And there you go. You see that. Uh, wait, let's see. I'm on dark mode right now. And I opened the Very Clean Colors app and it is black, right? If I go over to my settings and I go to the uh, developer and then turn off dark appearance. So now I'm back on light mode and I open the app again. If I go to it, you can see the background is white. So because it's already a system background color, it changes between light and dark mode. However, what if you have a custom color for your background? Let's say I stop the simulator for a second and in my uh, background here, I want it to be a more of a gray color, a custom gray color, not something that is shown over here, right? So I could click on, for example, custom and I could change my colors. So let's say I just do something like, I think this should work, CF, 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 there it is. It's, it's a bit gray, right? So if I were to run my app now, which it should be on light mode. If I go over here, you can see that the background is gray right here. Now, if I were to go to settings and I were to change it back to dark mode, so if I go over here and click dark appearance, right now my simulator is in dark mode and I go into the app, you could see that the background is gray again and the text up here is white, but the background is gray. It did not change to what it would be in dark mode. And that is a bit of a problem. So how can we do that? How can we make sure that the color, your custom colors change from light mode and dark mode to make sure that it is compatible with both modes? Well, to do that, you actually need to define a custom color. And there's actually no code that's required to define a custom color. You can do it all inside of your assets folder. So if you go to the assets folder and there's a plus button right here to add a new asset. If you click on the plus uh, button and you press on new color set, which is the third item down from the top, you could see that it creates a new color and you can name this color whatever you want. So for example, I can name it my, my background background color, just like that, my background color. And right now, by default, it is set to white. And I can change this to my gray color, which I think I did CF, CF, CF. So down here under input method, there are three input methods. There is a floating point, a 8-bit uh, 0 to 255, and an 8-bit hexadecimal. 
Now, one thing which is just to kind of explain it a little bit, when it says floating point, it's pretty much an adaptation of the RGB. So if I go over also to the 8-bit right here, uh, where it has 255, 255, 255, this is also RGB. You know, RGB, when you do it, you have a value for red, which is 0 to 255, a value for green, which is 0 to 255, and the value for blue, which is also 0 to 255. And using a combination of all of those uh, numbers, you'll be able to create any color that you want. Now, the thing is, is the floating point is simply just a number that you put in the 255 spot, but divided by 255. So for example, in this, if I were to set my red to 255, right, the floating point value would be one because it's 255 divided by 255. However, if I were to put in a value in my um, 8 bit, the zero to 255, like 50, right, then the floating point value would be zero divided by 255. It would be around 0 0.916. So that is basically an explanation of what the floating point and the 8-bit is. Now I'm going to go and hit, click hexadecimal. This is basically what I did as a custom color you saw um, a few moments ago. So I'm going to simply type in my hex code for my color. And you can see now that this is my gray color. Just like that, it is now in. So when I go over to my main.storyboard and I were to change my background color from custom to, as you can see, there's now a new, uh, a new section right here that has a header called named colors. And I can simply click on my color and this is there my background color and now it sets it to the custom color that I defined. Now the thing is, it's not going to change just because I create a new color and I use the exact same thing. It's not going to change light and dark mode. However, there is a special thing inside of the assets folder that allows you to do that. So if you go over to your assets folder and you click on your color, you can see that in the third group on the, uh, on the right pane, there is a little drop down for appearances. So if you click on the drop down, you see that there is any dark and any light dark and none. Right now it's set to none. However, click on any light and dark. As now you can see what has happened is you now have three colors in your my background color custom color set, right? You now have an any appearance, a light appearance, and a dark appearance. And this is actually what the dark mode background will now be. Right, you have light mode, the light appearance, and now dark mode, dark appearance. And the thing is, is now because you click that, you have these options. You can now change what color you want to appear in the dark mode spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my hexadecimal, and I'm going to choose a uh, some sort of number. I did CF, 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 so I'm just going to choose something a little bit very dark gray, but not exactly black. So I think one thing w would work would be 030303, I think, off the top of my head. Yeah, I may make it a little bit more uh, 080808. Okay, that is pretty, pretty black. It's not exactly black, but it's pretty black, right? And so that is now going to be my dark mode appearance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm first going to change my, um, my appearance back to light mode just so that you can see. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to run my app. Because remember, I set the background color to my new custom color. So this change that we did will automatically apply. I'm going to click run right here and it's going to run my, my app varying colors on my simulator. And you can see the background is now gray. However, if I go over and I go to the, to the settings app, if I can do it, let's see. There we go, took a while to get home. And I click on settings and I click on dark appearance. If I now go and I open my app varying colors, you can see now the background is set to the custom color we chose. And this is very, very useful. But now what if you have text on your view? So let's say I have on my main dot storyboard, uh, I were to drag in a label. I were to drag in a label on my view. Now, naturally, again, the color is set to default label color. So when I'm in light mode, it's going to be black. And when I switch it to dark mode, it's going to be white. So actually already, generally, the color is already set. 
However, you can do the exact same thing and for, for example, create a new name color and click on that new name color that you chose where you can change the light and dark mode and that will also change your label. So pretty much this happens or this works with any color in the entire system. And all you have to do is to create a custom color in your assets. Now you may be wondering, how do I do it programmatically, right? So if I ha if I'm in, I'm just going to uh, write some uh, something right here. First, I'm going to go full page, and I'm going to minimize uh, this right here. Okay, and let's say I want to reference the custom color that I created. How would I do that? Well, I can say um, let my color right equals, and then you can type in UI color, and you can do open parentheses to access the constructor for the UI color object. And if you go down, if you scroll down, you'll see here named. And now you can supply a string with the name of your color. So in my case, the name of my color, which is inside of my assets.exe assets is my background color. I can simply copy that name and drop it in right here. And now the my color variable that I've just created will now store my custom color. And I'll be able to apply it to my text uh, my text or labels or anything. For example, like let's say I have a text, uh, like a label here. Of course, I've not, you know, defined it. I'm just get, I'm just showing you as an example of how to do it. You do a label. So let me just say here UI label just so that it works. You can do label dot uh, background, uh, sorry, dot text color. And then you can set it equal to my color and it would work perfectly fine. And you can do the same for a button. So let's say you had a button that you wanted to change the text color of. Then all you have to do is there's, it's a little bit different. You have to do UI button dot set text color. And uh, if you are set title color and then you can simply, sorry, this should be like this here. So then in here, you can simply put in my color just like that to set the title color of your button and it should be and then you'll also have this four which you can just do dot normal just like that but that is basically how to programmatically access the exact same color that you created inside of your assets folder and it's very easy to do uh, obviously these are just this is just the code to do it, it it's not actually going to work because i've not connected the button or the label to anything in my code but that is the way programmatically to access custom colors that you created and so it's very easy to now create a color, have light and dark mode capability, and it will all work perfectly. And that way you're able to not just use, you know, the system colors, which automatically do that. And you can actually create your own, your own colors because, you know, different apps will have different backgrounds that you have, or that either you as a designer or another designer has created for the app and you want to use that background. Now you're able to, and also vary for light and dark mode. All right, so that is how to vary colors between light and dark mode in your iOS app. All of the code in this video will be in my GitHub page, which is in the description below. And uh, like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.